It's time for the Wrestling Perspective Podcast on Fight TV and anywhere else you get your podcasts. It's me, Dennis Farrell, alongside Lars Fredrickson. What's going on? Oh, you know, just hanging out. I'm I'm really excited because we have Jess Sick uh, here. I think that's I think that's the, the the correct pronunciation of it. But Jessica is here. I'm excited for Friday's show. First of all, first and foremost, I'm a huge TNA Impact fan over the years. So, and I'm excited to see her and her do her thing Friday night. That's right, Friday night, Bound for Glory. Make sure you get it on pay per view. I say go to Fight TV and get it just because I'm kind of partial where we are, but other places have it. But, you know, go to Fight. Get, give them your money. Where we, our guest, will be vying for, what, your second opportunity at Tag Team Goal. We have a former Knockouts champion. This girl has been doing a lot of things. It, I will start off my, with this question of, you're kind of the cornerstone of this women's division. and one of those people that just seems like they're happy they're not going anywhere and it it feels like this company is i wouldn't say finally but really starting to build around you do you feel and going into bound for glory do you feel any extra pressure on your shoulders to perform at at, at such a big pay-per-view when you are going from you know jessica havoc to now jessica and and really coming into your own yeah, I honestly, obviously the pressure is on. Um, next September will be my 20th year as a pro wrestler in this business. And the first time I got an opportunity with Impact was when I was just 10 years in. Mm-hmm. Um, and I felt like at that point, I was like, you know, before I'd gotten to TV the first time, I was like pretty confident. I knew what I was doing. And, you know, I'd, I'd got, I, had so many matches and wrestled so many different styles of opponents, both male and female. And then, you know, when I got to TV the first time it was TNA, um, it was, it was a very extremely stressful, soul crushing and, um, but also very lesson learning, um, like, it, that 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 entire time I really learned I had a whole new respect for the way TV was run compared to you know doing my thing on the indies you know or independent scene for so long and I I honestly was like oh my gosh maybe I don't know what I'm doing mm-hmm. um it was under a different regime then and I I have to say it was really difficult for, I, I did lose a lot of my confidence when I was there, uh, the first time, just because there was a few different things. Um, I was told by so many different people, oh, you need to do it this way, this way, this way. And it all was so contradictory, but I was trying my hardest to please everybody else or each person. Like, uh, like I was trying to please everyone and try to cater to what advice they had for me. And I, feel like in a way I kind of lost myself for a little bit um what you know when I first got there though too I got the opportunity to get in the ring with who I think is one of the biggest legends in women's wrestling being Gail Kim Mm -hmm. um you know we had a really hard fought feud and I just a couple months ago went back and watched those matches back and was like we killed it like I, I got, it was the first time where I really experienced the internet fans and the TV wrestling fans and they tore me apart. Like, and it really, really, it broke me. It it, it shattered my heart It with it because, you know, and so many of us wrestlers who, um, who like, uh, if you've been in this for a significant amount of time, even sometimes a short amount of time. And, and you have any kind of success, you un- understand that that person most likely sacrificed so much of who they are, so mm-hmm. much time with family. Like, I can't tell you, I've missed weddings. I've missed birthday parties, milestones. I've missed funerals. I've missed, you know, all this stuff. And I always would have 
people like, why, like, what are you doing? Like how, you know, but it, when you're not in it, if you're not in it, and this goes with any, any form of entertainment, whether it be music, you know, wrestling, like, you know, just anything to do with entertainment as a whole, we, we go through a lot. Um, and I feel like a lot of our, uh, journeys on like, you know, on the road and having to travel and live on the road a lot. Like, I feel like a lot of our lives are a lot more like parallel and similar than we would think. Um, I, I, uh, I was there when I first got to TNA, I was there for a year before they, uh, stopped using me. And then, um, you know, when I came, I came back, uh, about three years ago and I, I have to say it's like night and day. Uh, what I love about impact is from office to roster. It's, I feel like we're a family. Mm-hmm. Um, what I like about impact is we're, cons- we're constantly trying to build each other up and support each other instead of tear each other down. We're all, you know, and if there's any competition whatsoever, understand that it's friendly competition. It's just to help, you know, we, we like to push each other and we want to see uh, everyone at their best possible form, I guess. Well, you know, I, it, what you were just talking about sort of made me think about what's happening on Friday. It's like your guys is, you know, basically big pay-per-view is happening the same night as a WWE show the same night as an AEW show. And you were talking about that pressure, um, you know, that you had initially coming into the company. Now you say it's a completely different world. Do you find it because it's not on a Sunday, let's just say, is there any extra added pressure to you as a performer? Do you feel? Uh, Yeah, I think so. Because, you know, there is so much more wrestling out there. And if you ask me, um, I feel like impact wrestling, it's, we are constantly fighting an uphill battle and I feel that we have the best wrestling show on TV week in, week out, every pay-per-view tops the last and bound for glory, especially, you know, with it, like you said, it's, it's on a Friday. Um, it's, you know, and you, you can watch, you know, you could order it. I, I also prefer fight TV. Um, I, I love fight TV. They're great. Um, but, but like it is, it is a lot of pressure because I feel like we already, we already are constantly having to prove ourselves as a company mm-hmm. and, 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 but I, I take great honor and I'm extremely grateful to work for a company that is so, uh, adamant about making sure their talent is happy uh this is a this is a company where we can be our most authentic selves uh you know we we're allowed to pitch ideas we're allowed to like come up with things and they because they say you know nobody knows who you are better than you and if you think that there's something better for who you are and you know your character please tell us and you know things like that. And I think it, I, I take much pride in being able to not only get to wrestle on the biggest pay-per-view of the year for impact wrestling, but to be alongside Taya Valkyrie and wrestle for the knockouts world tag team championships. I've held gold at impact wrestling before. Um, and honestly, each and every time I get an opportunity like this here, I, I don't take it lightly and I don't take it for granted because I know that I know how hard I've worked to get here. And I know that there's so many people who would love to be in my shoes for the same opportunity. Absolutely. And as a guy who spent a lot of time in the backstage area with impact, you know, writing PD Williams coattails in the past and Lars (laughs) as well. I, I, and I passed you by a few times. We've said our hellos. You wouldn't remember me because I'm not a rock star or anything. So, you know, or PD Williams. Oh my gosh. (laughs) Sorry, Lars. Uh, (laughs) But I will say this. The one thing I observed. She probably just stepped over you because you're so short. Oh, she 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 probably thought you were like one of the dwarf gimmicks. You know what I mean? (laughs) Who said that? (laughs) She's like, like, PD, who's your fan behind you? (laughs) You walked up. No, no, be like, 
Petey, you is, that, P- Petey is that your son? <laughs> <laughs> Who's that better looking guy behind you, Petey? <laughs> uh, but I, I will say, uh, in, in being friends with a lot of pro wrestlers, I, I I see how they act around fans, and some of them I kind of go, "Come on, we're friends. You you're not going to sign up for that kid." Or yeah. you know, I, and I've and I've seen you many times stop what you're doing, go talk to a fan. Uh, when you come in, I've seen you greet fans, and it, it, this isn't something I can say to a lot of wrestlers, but any chance you get, I I've witnessed you make yourself accessible. And that I don't think is taught, you know, as kids, I always said, if I'm a pro baseball player, I would sign autographs for everybody. But was there anybody that taught you how to be more fan friendly? Or was that just something that you, was a mindset? How how did that come about? Well, honestly, yeah, like, even all through school, like I've always been a super outgoing person. And I'm even though it may seem like in the moment that I'm just like, kind of, cause like I, I, I try to, I'm always, always, always trying to make people laugh. I'm always trying to go out of my way to like, you know, I'm the weirdo at a store that if I see a stranger and we make eye contact, I'm smiling at you. And like, you know, some people, you know, a lot of times they're like, Oh, that was nice. And very rarely I'll get the, you know, and it's like, well, I hope you have a better day. But like, I just, um, honestly being, being someone who's already always been outgoing and try to go out of my way to make sure everyone feels welcome. Um, I also on my, like, I am honestly a very observant person as well. And I, I watch people and, uh, and it's something I've always done. Um, so I just, uh, and I realized very, very early on in my career that fans are very, very vital and very important to the sport. Um, I have always been someone who was very grateful for any, I have fans who have been supporting me since day one, who are still in my life in some capacity to this day, whether it be tweeting me every so often, following me on social media, sending an email here or there, just say hello. Um, you know, just stuff like that. And I just, I've always been really big on just treating everyone respectfully. Uh, I, in my 20 years, basically of wrestling, I can honestly count on one hand, how many enemies I've had in this business. And I can't even say like, honestly, I can't even say that they're my enemies now because the way I handle any type of confrontation, I always, no matter how angry I would be, um, I always, uh, approached it very carefully and I always make sure never to talk down to anyone, never name call, never cuss, especially when, you know, you're having, having to have those come to Jesus meetings. But like, I, I've just always been big on, you should always just be good to everyone. And, you know, and then if, if someone isn't worth, you know, the time or if they're like bad people, whether it takes five minutes or five years, they will eventually somehow blackball themselves. Like it's, yeah. um, I don't know. I just, I, I, I'm real big on making everybody feel welcome. Um, it has bitten me in the butt a couple of times, but you, you live and you learn, but I, at the same time, I can't change my personality. I can't change who I, you know, like, cause so many of my friends have been like, just, you just stop being so nice to people. And it's like, okay. But if it's who I am, it's who I am. I don't know. I but I do love I do love fans. I love the fans. They're great. Most of them. Some of them are pretty crazy, but <laughs> we won't get well, to I, that right now. <laughs> I, I do have a question about that later on. And maybe this next sure. question I'm about to ask is kind of a two-part question. Mm-hmm. Because I mean, we've seen the evolution of what you've done. Now you're Jessica Havoc, Jessica Havoc. I want to go back to Havoc and CZW days. Because uh-huh. that was one of the first real t- uh, real times where I actually saw the intergender thing really happen. Yeah. You know, I mean, you would see it here and there, but anywhere on a consistent basis, it would always be on the indies or these these kinds of more violent shows, right? Um, I, and, and we've had people on who have done these intergender 
tag matches is uh, tag matches over the years, but I've never asked this question, but do you approach that in the same way that you approach any other match or is it, Oh, you know, this is a whole different, you know, thing, you know, different anatomy, different kind of like way to think about things. Sure. Uh, you know, I mean, I, I, I've always wanted to ask the question and now I, now I'm asking it. Yeah. So, it, and it's a great question and it's honestly one I've never been asked before, but, um, honestly, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but one of, one thing that I, so, you know, I'm a, a woman, a female wrestler and I've, you know, women's wrestling is my passion. Um, I've spent a lot of my career also doing the intergender matches as well, like you mentioned. Um, but I feel that a lot of almost every intergender match that I've had, I, I feel like I do approach it a little differently because, um, I've run into situations, um, you know, like I mentioned before, I've, you know, because I've been wrestling so long, when I first got into wrestling, women's wrestling was completely different than what it is today. Oh, yeah. So, so like when I was just started training to wrestle, I was watching my favorite women's wrestlers doing, having to do bra and panties matches on TV and stuff like that. And, and so it was like, and I still like, that wasn't my aspiration to be, I want to be that. Like, it was just like, I looked at it as why are these badass bitches doing this shit when they could wrestle just as good as the guys and they, you know, they can have these great matches and they have had, but this is what they're being deduced to. But, um, so the way I would approach intergender matches, um, cause I've had my fair share of, you know, I'm booked against a guy and I get to the show and he's just bad attitude right off the bat acting as if he doesn't even want to do this match this is dumb. I remember one of the first times I, and I couldn't even tell you the guy's name if I remembered it. Like I, I can't wins. even remember who it was. <laughs> Sammy Callahan. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, it was like, it was um, it, this one particular guy. He was like, we're, we start to put together the match and he's like, the whole time and I'm new. So I'm, I'm like, you know, just a few years in. So my trainer was very adamant on you be respectful. You know, you have humility, all this, this stuff, whatever. And he's just huffing and puffing. And then I was like, okay, I'm just thinking like, well, I'm going to, I guess, uh, try to just get through this and like, try to ignore this. And then, you know, we're putting together the match and I was like, yeah. And then like, you know, when, when we go to the outside, like I'll give you a forearm and he was like, I'm not selling it. And I was like, okay. And then, and then basically what it boiled down to is why am I wrestling this girl? I don't want to wrestle a girl. I don't want to sell for a girl. Da, 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 da. That being said, I, I uh, like, my thing is I, I think intergender wrestling is great as long as it's done right. Um, I think that it is really important. Uh, so after that particular experience, anytime I wrestled a guy after that, and it was a lot, a lot, a lot, I would always go out of my way to be like, okay, so I want to make sure that I'm not making you look too weak or stupid or whatever, because at the end of the day, I get it men are stronger than women this and that da, da 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 whatever that's fine um but i would always approach the matches and kind of like make it known to the guy it takes two of us to have a good match and i want to do what you think is going to be best for you um you know uh being a male and stuff like that and then there were so there were a bunch of guys that are like who gives a shit let's just wrestle like, but, but it was just because I had to deal with so many, um, so many guys that were so just like, ugh, I don't want to wrestle yeah. a girl. I don't, and it was, it was twice as bad if they had to put you over, right. but my, but, but that being said, I never took it personally. If a guy didn't want to do an intergender match, it, it's, it's honestly, it's clearly preference. I've never held it against a person or thought that they were being sexist in any way because i don't want to wrestle a girl i get it 
and it look it's not for everybody and and there are like i've gotten so much heat for for wrestling guys anyway even right. from some like crazy ass fans like there was like this one fan who harassed me for two years straight on all social media platforms challenging me to a real i'll show up at any event and i'll beat the shit out of you and this and that and it's just like oh my you think you're so tough because you wrestle guys da, da, da. i'm like yo you you need to chill it i don't know it's just i get it like if there's like a stigma about it but wrestling it changes all the time well i mean i i would think that 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 kind of match would leave it's it's far more open for creativity yeah. in a sense because there is so much uh there's it's so opposite you know Absolutely. but i get I, in retrospect since you've had these matches with your soon-to-be husband do you see that now as like a uh as like a beginning of like kicking the tires taking a little test drive on the on the future guy in your life <laughs> <laughs> that's that is uh that's a great question um She's i'll tell you what the, <laughs> never been asked that one either look at all these great questions no so when i first met sammy as well and i mean we always we, it, we didn't meet or know each other for like ever and i always 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 by lots of different fans got compared oh you're like the female version of sammy callahan because i would do these promos and like you know, just the way I would like, uh, just, sh just the way I shoot my promos for my upcoming matches, the way I would talk, the way I'd present myself. Um, I, and I, I'll, I'm going to be honest with you for the first little bit, I was like, who the hell is Sammy Callahan? I, I okay, great. I'm the female Sammy Callahan. No, I'm Jessica Havoc. Um, whatever. But like, my thing was, um, Sammy, Sammy, when I, when I first met Sammy, we, we got along great right off the bat. And he was like my, that was like the first intergender match. And I'd had a ton before him, like, but he, he was the first intergender match that I had that I felt like got like a good amount of buzz too. And it was a lot because of who he was in wrestling as well. And we had very different paths in wrestling um, but like he'd, he'd already been solidified as this crazy maniac. He'd already had a bunch of death matches under his belt mm -hmm. by the time we'd wrestled each other and stuff like that. So, and we, we've like, you know, we wrestled and we've actually, ha uh, <laughs> we've actually tagged a couple of times against random people at random indie shows. And then if we ever lost the match, he would get in my face and be all mad and then just push me. And then he'd be like, choke slam me. And I'm like, Oh my God. Okay. <laughs> but like, and maybe I'm giving a little too much away, but it's just always one of those things. Just like, he's just a lot of fun. And like, there is like intergender wrestling uh, today. I feel like is like, there's still some people who are not into it, but, and I get that. I understand but it's honestly, like you said, it, it is a lot of fun and there's a whole different story and dynamic to tell there. And there's, there's a, there's room for so much more, you know, just, just fun and storytelling. Yeah. yeah. I, I will say Sammy was probably one of the first people that have been generally nice to me throughout yeah. me knowing him. So that, but that's the only thing I'm going to say about him. Cause this isn't his podcast. Screw him. <laughs> And he yeah, sucks at Fortnite. Uh, yeah. Oh, really bad. Fortnite. <laughs> but, what, what, what skin do you have? <laughs> the loser oh skin. My. He's yeah. got, he freaking has so many of them, though. He's honestly, yeah. he's not that bad at Fortnite, but he definitely gets really mad at it. So. He's taking all that wrestling money and putting it into V-Bucks, isn't he? <laughs> yes, he is. <laughs> Listen, I'll tell you, sometimes I'll be sitting up here because I like I, I also stream video games. I do not play Fortnite, but... Uh, you got taste. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like... <laughs> well, I, like, I don't know. <laughs> he's not a 16-year-old girl. <laughs> yeah, she's not a 16-year-old girl, guys, so that's why she doesn't play Fortnite. Yeah. 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 I play games with depth, like Fallout. <laughs> Thank <Yeah>. you. <laughs> oh but, my gosh! But I, I do have a follow up question to this whole intergender thing: is when did you start to notice you professionally, where that kind of male chauvinist uh, 
you know, thought process of the past of I can't look weak to a girl started to give way to the more, hey, let's go out and entertain people and have fun. Um, I mean, I would say it was probably around the time that I, because like I, I really started to get a buzz um, with my name when I started working with WSU uh, well before CZW took it over. Um, me, Mercedes Martinez, uh, Rain, uh, Nikki Rocks, like, uh, even Alicia Edwards, who I, f Alicia Edwards does not get enough credit. Um, I think she's like the hidden gem of women's wrestling, of pro wrestling. She's awesome, like, in her gender matches as well. Uh, like, just in general, just great. But, like, we were, like, the, the core that was building WSU up. So, but around, you know, when I started getting a buzz there and then, you know, I uh, became friends with Sammy, we wrestled at CZW. I feel like it was probably around then where I was getting into a whole different world uh, around a whole bunch of different other people in pro wrestling that wasn't the Midwest crew. Mm -hmm. And it was, you know, just kind of like, I finally was able to bust out of the Midwest a little bit and start getting a buzz and getting to go wrestle other places um, and I think it was around, I don't know, I'd probably say when I started wrestling at CZW and I realized, oh, well, not everybody is, you know, got like a freaking stick up their butt about, you know, cause I, I, I like pro wrestling is my life and it has been for about half of my life, but you, it's really important that you don't, you can't take yourself too seriously. Like, cause that's when it start. you just start making it miserable for you and then it becomes work right so yeah well you know you got the big show friday i yes. mean a lot of you know eyes i think are going to be on this show um what it, like so i want to talk about the evolution of your character sure. and why did you drop the name why are we just just doing jessica i mean is there a whole thought process behind it here i mean you know traditionally you do see this eventually and but i mean the ha you know because havoc jessica you know like what is part of the creative mind for you like where do you draw your inspiration what do you you know where do you where do you find the what triggers you to 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 move forward with the character what so, influences you so when i um if we could kind of talk about <laughs> and it's kind of nerdy too but um I've been um, a huge gamer since I was, since I could remember, like, um, and my, my mom was like, she was essentially a single mother, uh, you know, like, even though her and my dad were married till I was 13, he was never around and she was busting her butt working. And she made sure that me and my two brothers had everything that we needed and also wanted, but she, she was very strict on the second your grades start slipping, you're done with the video. We're going to cut off the video games, this, that, whatever. But so when I, I knew very, when I was very young that I wanted to wrestle, um, I used to talk about it through fifth grade, all the way through middle school. I got picked on quite a bit, but by the time I hit high school, uh, you know, I, I'd, uh, I, I got pretty popular and I was like the alternative, like punky girl, whatever, but I was friends with everybody. And so when I got to ninth grade, my best friend, Jeremiah, introduced me to a band called AFI. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh my God, this is my favorite band. Davey Havoc is so cool. Oh my God, he's so cute. I love him. I love him. I'm going to call myself Jessica Havoc. So I've literally been calling myself Jessica Havoc because of Davey since the ninth grade. Nerd, okay, but that's okay. well. No, 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 no. But honestly, like, I can, I, I had a feeling, you know, because that's my world, right? So, yeah. And any any pro wrestler or anybody that comes and grabs a name like that or does something like, and then looks like you too, I'm like, hmm. hmm. I yeah. wonder. So, okay, it's been confirmed. Okay, yes. so please continue. Can confirm, Davey Havoc is at fault. No, uh, so like I um. But like, even before I got into high school, I was just like envisioning like, you know, like, oh, when I, when I start wrestling, I want to like, this is how I want to be. Like, I want to like, 
I, I just wanted, I, I already kind of knew what I wanted to be. So when I started wrestling, it, it broke my heart when my trainer was like, he literally said to me, and now, and keep in mind when I started wrestling, I was 17 years old, still a senior in high school. Um, I, he told me, and I was, and I was a hundred pounds less than I am now. When I started, I was a little gangly skinny thing, but because I was taller and I got to throw my phone over there, um, because I, because I was taller and, um, you know, just like, I, I just have a bigger frame. It, it is what it is. Uh, my, my trainer right off the bat was like, just so you know, you're not going to be able to make a career of this because you're, you're just, you don't fit the mold of what women's wrestling is. Like, if you want to do anything, this business, you got to have, you got to be blonde. You got to put your tits out. You got to be tan. You got to do this. You got to do that. And my heart was broken. And, and it was just like one of those things where it's like, shit, well, do I want to do this? And of course I wanted to. And then for the first couple of years, I really struggled with who I was in wrestling. And, but I, like, I, I still, I was like, my wrestling name is Jessica Havoc. That's my wrestling name. That I, I, that's what I want it to be. And it, it kind of worked out and it stuck, but like, I went through some really, um, some really stressful, um, first, I'd say three or four years of being a wrestler before I finally was like, screw this. I'm just going to be who I am. And I took inspiration for Havoc or Jessica Havoc from a video game called Resident Evil. Uh, that's my favorite video game series. And in Resident Evil 2, there was a character named Hunk who wore a full face gas mask. And I thought that was the coolest thing ever. And I was like, I love that vibe. I want to do something like that. I didn't want to do the full face gas mask, but I found like the half mask and I like ha got the spikes and lights and like, a lot of the ones I wear to the ring, like I made those, put those together myself. Like I would take different parts and like glue all this stuff. And, and I like kind of wanted to have like, um, kind of like a darker, like aura about who I was. And, you know, once I started getting a buzz, you know, on the East coast and getting more known, it was also when who I was in wrestling was falling to like who my character, what was falling into place. And, um, I just, uh, you know, up to now. And like I said before, next September, it'll be my 20th year in this business. I have literally for the better part of the last 15 years of my career, I've been building this havoc brand. I havoc is, my baby. That is what I have focused on. That is what my fans know me as. This is, this is what, this is everything that I've worked so hard for. So when I finally got to TV and they were like, and I was just like wondering like, what are they going to call me? And then Christy Hemi was like, sent me like a, a sketch of, uh, you know, gear ideas for my character. And I noticed on the back of my cape, which was essentially like a big spike thing. And it had like a long black like sheer cape and it said havoc on the back and i was like oh am i am i gonna be uh jessica havoc at impact or tna at the time she's like well we're dropping jessica we're just gonna call you havoc but yeah you're essentially gonna be yourself we're gonna change your look a little bit that was like a huge victory for me i felt because it was like I'm obviously doing something right like there's obviously i have something special here because they didn't want to change much the only thing they really changed was just a little bit of the gear just so, to make me look a little more like dark and menacing rather than, you know, what I, you know, cause I threw a couple different styles. They essentially took my, my style and, and I, they even paid for my first set, my gear and everything. They paid for all of that. So it was like, it was just cool to be able to, you know, kind of, evolve into that and then so you fast forward to now um you know for the last i'd say year and a half havoc on tv um i feel like in a way i don't know if we were hitting a wall with what do we do now 
Um, and you know, uh, the last time that we saw Havoc on TV, it was against Masha Slamovich and the match was two and a half minutes. And I could tell you that when Masha pinned Havoc, it was like people were like the whole, if you could, if you could hear, imagine a few hundred people all gasping at once like they could not believe you know and and you have an opponent like Masha who's been ripping and tearing through girls for the better part of the year Mm -hmm. leading up to that and it was one of those things where not only did it solidify Masha as a true badass because the biggest monster badass on the roster came out and challenged her and then Masha was able to beat her in two and a half minutes Right. Like I, I understand what what you know what Masha is about. And it's it's been awesome to watch her evolve as well. But after you know, after the havoc thing, you know, after that match and everything, I think it was just one of those things where they're, you know, we're just, you know, thinking of ideas and stuff. I don't know that the intention was ever to to write havoc off. I think it was just like, well, here's a couple ideas that we're thinking of. And the one thing um, that they, that uh, like, you know, like Christy Hemi, she would often be in the locker room, you know, like we'd all be hanging out and stuff. And she like, I guess was just like paying attention to me one day. And I'm like, you know, go like just making everybody laugh and just like, you know, just being me and, she just says out of nowhere, she's like, Jessica, you're a TV show. And I was like, thank you. Cause I'm not sure if that's a compliment, but she's like, no, like that, like, like your, your personality is like so much more than what this habit character is. So, so I think that it was just like a mix of what are we going to do from here? And and there's a ton of things that we could have done, but, but it was more like impact was just kind of like, let's try this. Cause I like, you know, I was presented to me in a way. And at first I, I, I will say I was a bit nervous and just felt kind of like, man, have, have I run my course? Like, is this, you know, like, and I shouldn't have approached it in my head. Like, am I doing something wrong? It, but the way it was presented to me is they're like, you have such a big personality outside of this Havoc character and you, you know, like when you have a character like Havoc, um, you're kind of pigeonholed into like, you know, how much you can be and like, you're not going to see Havoc be like, cause I'm sick. Like, you know, like that's not what people, you know, right. that's not what they expect. So like, they were just like, let's just do this. Let's try this. And if it doesn't work. Um, and I have to say, I was really, really nervous, but then like, it was weird because the first time that I'd had like an interaction as Jessica with Ty and Rosemary like you know we're filming the three of us have such a fun dynamic with who we are anyway because they were all so different but if you watch us interact you know even off camera like behind the scenes it's such a chemistry that cannot be taught and honestly there was like a handful of fans that were like initially like this is so freaking stupid but then i saw those same fans a few weeks later like okay this is for lot sorry to say it just sick so like it was cool because i kind of proved my to myself that i can get i could get over (laughs) without having to be this character you know this big scary whatever there's there's more layers to me as a person and as a performer and and being able to do this and I have to say this is the most fun that I've had in such a long time so it's it's been really cool to like just kind of be more myself and kind of have more fun um you know on tv and let the fans in on kind of like how I like am you know outside of this habit character so Sorry, my cat just knocked over something in the background. <laughs> but anyway. Well, it's kind of, it, it, I saw it as like kind of almost a rebirth and you yes. could get a little bit more 
in depth with who you are as a human being, which I think, you know, a lot of people, like when you are doing those characters and you're just Havoc and you're just this gnarly, downer, dark person, there's not really any room. It's almost like you get pigeonholed into that. Now it's like this whole other world has opened up for you to play with. Yes. And I, but, I, but I will say before I hand it off to Dennis is that Davey Havoc, when I tell him this story, I know he's going to be stoked. Dennis. <laughs> Uh, I, I will say what I need from you, though, is if you ever go back to being Havoc again, I need you to wake up in like a Bob Newhart kind of way with Sam Callahan all dressed up as Halico. And I just had this bad dream that I was like this. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, and that's then, that's awesome. That, and then, that writes itself. Exactly. And then everybody's like, was it a dream inside of a wrestling show? What did we, you know? That's that's the only thing I pray that you guys do when you switch back. Like your promo is you popping out of bed, same as like, what's wrong? And you're like, and you have your gas mask on and you're like, I just had this dream. I was pink hair and that's that's all oh, I'm saying. That's so funny. I love that. That's great. You can keep that one, courtesy. Thank you. Us. Thank but you. I, I know you got to get going. And I do have one more question, which sure. I think I may be stealing this one from Lars, but I want to go back to your first knockout title reign. And uh, this is kind of a PD Williams question as we pick on him all the time. But can you <laughs> talk about leading up to that? How long in advance did you know you were going to win it? What was your reaction like a as they told you about it? And even in the ring when you're celebrating – uh, and as we heard from this podcast, you're an underdog. Your trainer told you you're probably not going to make it. Here you are winning, you know, yeah. impact knockout champion. Title. And yeah. it all comes together. Can can you talk a little bit about all that? Well, yeah. Like, uh, so Gail Kim was always, um, I, I'll tell you what, when I was at TNA, um, Gail Kim and Madison Rain and Christy Hemi were my freaking lifesavers, honestly. Um, so like, I, you know, I had that, I was going into this feud with Gail and I don't even, I'm not, I can't remember. I don't even think she was the knockout champion when she and I started right, like kind of feuding, but, um, when it, it, it wasn't initially told to me. And a lot of times, like we, we just find out you know, it, it could literally be down to the minute. The way this business is, it's like things can change all the time. But when, like I was, when I learned earlier that day that I was winning, I was just like, I, I honestly felt like I was in a dream world. It was so surreal to me because Gail Kim is somebody that I looked up to for so long anyway. And she was just honestly, and she is one of the toughest opponents I've had too. Like she freaking fiery, like intense, hard hitting. Like I think her and Alicia Edwards have probably hit me harder than anyone else. And I'm like, you guys are the smallest people ever. Why do you hurt so bad? But like, it, it was, it was very surreal. And I definitely, um, I definitely that day ended up going into the, the bathroom that was in the locker room by myself and was like like cried a little bit it was like oh my god this is happening you know so and, and not only did I get to win the knockouts world championship from Gail Kim that match was also aired as the main event of that episode so it was like so many really cool things and really cool milestones in my career um in one night and then I actually got to, to, the first time I ever got to go to Japan was for Bound for Glory. Uh, and I defended that uh, Knockouts World Championship against uh, Velvet Sky in Corgan Hall. I'm like, am I, do, I literally was questioned, do I deserve this? What did I do to deserve this? I shouldn't be here. It was like it, an insane, like, dream, honestly. Well, my last question is this. Yes. And I've never asked this question, but I definitely think that you're the person to ask it to. We see, we have seen over the last, you know, 10 years that wrestling is kind of catching up with society. It's yes. not 10 years behind. Um, 
have you ever like walked into a dressing room with your background, you know, with being punk and kind of alternative and stuff. And there's somebody that's kind of playing like a punky kind of person. And then after the match, they get their pumpkin spice latte and their Uggs. And you just think to yourself, you're a fucking poser. Honestly, a li- uh, in my earlier years of wrestling, absolutely, I'm like, <laughs> Even when I was in high school, too, I had one of my best friends, his name was Nate, and he was the punkiest rock kid ever. And he would get so mad, and I would liken it to this particular instance. We're walking down the hall, and then there's a group walking opposite, and there's this one of these preppy girls, and she's like, you know, whatever, dressed exactly the way you described, and her t-shirt says, punk princess and he's like uh, she doesn't even know what punk rock is and i was like yeah and like so it was like one of those things so that always that was like the best uh like example of that situation and there have been so many times where i've been like oh, you are a lie this is bullshit but yeah, like for sure, a hundred percent. Because I mean, there, there's some, there's some real ones. I mean, let's be yes. honest. There's some real ones. I mean, we know we don't really have to mention names. Yes. You being one of them, but there are some that play that character that I just turn off the fucking TV. Yeah. I just like, I don't believe this because I know this is just straight up basic bitch shit right here. Yep. You know what I mean? Like yep. once the costume goes off, it's like, you know, what? I don't even want to get into it and I make know. this a, a <laughs> negative. But so, yeah. Okay. That was my final question. I'm out. Yeah. Je- that's great. Jessica, can I tell you a secret? Sure. When we turn the podcast off, Lars puts on a smoking jacket, has a pipe, and there's Beethoven in the background. He's like, mm, good podcast, <laughs> mama. <laughs> <Not good day." laughs> so I don't know where this co- question was coming from. <clears throat> that's all I'm saying. Well, <laughs> I just enjoy a pipe and Beethoven. I mean, <laughs> but- hey, who doesn't? I'm, uh- I mean, you know, and <laughs> I do right. it with a fucking tattoo on my forehead, all right? <laughs> Hell yeah. yeah. Let's wrap <laughs> this up. October 7th, this Friday, depending on when you're watching this podcast, Bound for Glory, go watch it on Fight TV or the replay. Jessica, where can people find you and your streaming and, and, and anything you want to promote? Uh, I, I have Twitter, uh, but my handle is at Fear Havoc, and that's Havoc with a K, like the Davy Havoc. The Davy Havoc. <laughs> uh, my Instagram uh, is at Havoc Death Machine. And then I also stream almost daily on Twitch. It's twitch.tv slash Jessica Havoc. And uh, that's actually going to be the platform where you will be able to interact with me most. So, And uh, real quick, Lars, WhatsApp, real quick. Can you promote that? Your WhatsApp selling your... Oh, what not? What not? What not what's up? I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm you know old. what? They're not they're not paying me enough to to promote it on here. All right. Well, with that being said, uh wrestling Same. perspective podcast. <laughs> no, sure I'm just know. kidding. I'm just kidding. Oh. I got nothing but love. I got nothing but love. But yeah, I've been I've been auctioning off a lot of my stuff. There's a great app called Whatnot, and uh you can come and do it. I do a live stream. I'm gonna my next one's gonna be Friday, October 14th. I haven't uh, settled on a time yet, but I've got stage worn gear stuff. Just I'm trying to clean out the closets clean out the records. I got 10,000 records, way too many toys, way too much crap. So I want to get rid of it because I don't know. I wanted to buy more smoking jackets. Yeah. <laughs> you moved it. You moved it from the seventh because of bound for glory. You didn't want to go head to head with them. Abs- no, because I already knew that there was going to be enough competition for my whatnot live stream. Cause you know, most people, you know, going to want to watch BFG. You know what I mean? So oh, I'll be man. like, the more right. get off my get off my fucking live stream, bro. You got a show to run. Yeah. <laughs> Jessica, thank you so much for carving out a few minutes tonight yeah. to talk about wrestling with us. We appreciate it. Appreciate I'd love it. to come back. This was great. Oh, was great. We I want to talk about Japan. So I mean, there's so many things that yeah. there's you know, but I when you get lost in conversation, and sure. it's a great inter- it's a great interview. Yep. Love to yeah. Sammy, all right. Yes, thank you guys. For everybody at home, the podcast is over. Go home, do whatever. We'll say goodbye. It's off the air. Thank you, Jessica. Thank you very much.